this is Steve. This is Bob. This is Jay. We are Alpha Quadrant 6, a science fiction review show. And on this episode, we are going to review Season 1 of Star Trek Strange New Worlds. Now, you may have seen our review that we did after the first two episodes, giving our impressions of the beginning of the season. We promised to be back at the end of the season, and here we are. Now, this whole thing is going to be spoiler-ridden. We're going to just give our impressions of the sea of the whole season and then we're going to do a deep dive on two of our favorite episodes just really go deep on them so first overall impression i'll just say very quickly i loved it i thought it was a great season it delivered exactly what it was supposed to deliver a new fresh but nostalgic original series kind of show i thought every episode was solid except for one there was Mm -hmm. one clunker this season which is not bad that they're so you know they they went what was it ten episodes they went from nine to yeah, 10. ten episodes yeah so that's pretty good ninety percent yeah not bad I mean look at Next Generation their first season was kind it was of dodgy. it was yeah it was super dodgy. wow so for the entire season um I I think it, they did a wonderful job I enjoyed pretty much every episode and the finale oh my god um was just a masterpiece I think we'll we'll talk yes about we'll that. talk about that I I liked it a lot. Okay, my problem is me. Yeah. Right. Do you understand where I'm yes, going with this? Yes. You're going to nitpick something. That <laughs> no, no. The, the problem. The problem is like I'm such a fan of the, it wasn't the, the original series. Yeah. And I'm comparing it to the original series, whether I want to or not. My brain is doing it. I just can't help myself. Yeah. yeah. So I find that I get in my own way. Like when I look back on the episodes after I watched them, I'm like, that was a good story. They did a good job. It was good. And, and, and I, we got being down missions, you know, yeah. legitimately, we got like just a nice story that takes an hour to tell. And you yeah. don't have to worry Planet about like the week. Yeah. They didn't, they didn't do anything that I was like, Oh, really? You're going to save like the universe again. Like, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. no, it was solid. It was good. Good character development. I really liked the What's actors that they picked. It's me. I told you I'm being deadly, I'm deadly. But serious. What? But what is it? Just, you know, it just doesn't punch as hard as, the way that I felt when I watched when the you were ten season. years old. Yes, of course. <laughs> but you're never going to get that. I totally agree. So yeah. I'm, I'm. That's why it's I me. think about halfway through the season, I got to the point where I'm like, you know what? I really like these people. Yeah. I, like, I like what they're yeah. doing. The vibe is very good. It's good. It's probably some of the best Star Trek we've seen in a long yes, time. Yes, absolutely. And and for a first season, it was rock solid. It was rock for for a first season yeah. Star Trek TV show. It was rock solid. Yes, and it was better than most of the Star Trek movies. Right. So. Two, my two problems with the season, you know, one was the hallucination episode, you know, where they're in the medieval time thing. It just didn't work for me. Just the whole yeah. thing didn't work. I know they had to resolve that plot issue with the doctor and his daughter, and they did that great. They get that done. That was, you know, kind of like, where was that going? Uh, but just the whole episode was meh. And then they killed off one of the most interesting characters, and not in a way that was worth it. Was the, it heavy? The, 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 the Andorian. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, he's like a subspecies of in, of, of Andorian. Yeah, I loved be. him. I loved him, and I was very upset when he died. I was really kind of like, and it wasn't worth it. I, but then I realized who was going to replace him, and then I felt a little bit better. Who was going to replace Scotty? Him? You think so? I uh, know it. Did, did, did you see the last episode? I know, but that doesn't mean it's going to happen now. No, he's already there. He's already there. I heard his voice. They showed his voice. Yeah, that's what I. Well, that was the future, though. They showed it in the in the current time. I thought they did. That I, was the I, future. I, oh, I didn't. I read it like Bob. That was the future. So of course, at some point, Scotty comes in, but we don't know that it's maybe it's next season. You're you're right. It could be. It could I be. Think, of but course, he's I not think, there already. No. All right. They, but he's. I think he's going to come in next. Then that made me feel better. But I agree. If they replace him with Scotty, it would be worth <laughs> yeah, it. That would be pretty Hemi good. Was, well, he was wonderful. And I was really. Surprised that they took him out. And then you have Come to on. wonder: was the makeup too expensive? <laughs> I mean, you know, why did they get rid of like the one alien major character? Yes. You know what I mean? Yeah, I thought that was odd too. I mean, I didn't see. Sometimes, like Game of Thrones, the character dies, and it's so well written that you're like, "Oh, that sucks," but oh boy, that was good. Like yeah. you need you needed it. And in this one, I just didn't feel the need. I, yeah. I just felt a little, it was a little empty. Like like yeah. we want to kill a character, let's kill this guy. Yeah. You know? yeah, it wasn't as bad as when they killed Tashi R in the next gen. Where <laughs> it was like, what was an afterthought? Like it was ridiculous. But yeah. Um, <laughs> all right. Oh boy. Do you want to do your episode first or episode? I'll do it. Yeah, I'll do go, ahead. Yeah, go ahead, Jay. Before, I picked- you, before you go, Jay, can we talk about Pike's hair? <laughs> yes. Pike's hair in the course of this season character of itself. Became a thing. It became its own character. It just seemed to be getting higher and higher and higher 
I every can explain episode. It. I can and explain I was like, it. wait, I understand. He's got a great head of hair. It looks good. But it it just passed a point where it was like, no, it's too high. <laughs> it's like, I cannot look at it. It's the hair. I don't even see the face anymore. If you pay attention, yeah. it is a common hairstyle in the show. Other characters have that hairstyle. Not like him. Not like Pike. No, well, he's got to have the biggest because he's the captain. Right. But but it is. <laughs> oh, my God. It's, they, they actually picked a cool, like, a trendy hairstyle that is occurring in this world of Star Trek. That's fine. And I'm cool with it. But it, it would. Yeah, it, Bob, you're 200 years behind the time. It became a thing. And some some mornings I wake up and I'm, like, sleeping weird and my hair is doing this. I look, I got Pike hair. I got Pike hair. <laughs> oh my God. It's, it's, it's nice hair, That's man. I would love to have his hair. He's The, the guy's awesome. I love slice him. Anyway, I love slice him. Yeah, and even even his wacky Star Trek haircut is cool as shit on him. And I love this this the sense of humor. You know, there's definitely some humor going on sure, in, yeah. in this show. It's goofy. They don't cross a line though, where yeah. it becomes kind of cringy because it's they, their real people humor. Like right, they're not yeah. taking themselves too seriously. It's not campy. And it's yeah. a problem when in a lot of science fiction, like for example, Westworld. I looked at. I've watched every nanosecond of Westworld, all the seasons, and I looked. Nobody has ever smiled once in every episode. Yeah. You, it doesn't happen. That's the vibe of the show. Throw, throw, I know, but throw some humor once in a while, please. They have it. They do it well, and kudos to them. Yeah. I mean, it's humor, not common humor in sci-fi. Hard, it's hard to throw in a little bit of humor in an, yeah. in an otherwise serious yeah. show. It, it, it's hard because tonally you're dancing on thin ice. you got to be super careful, mm. and you have to write it exquisitely. Yeah. So I can understand them saying, like, let's just not But they did it that. in the original series. Yeah, They absolutely. had a good level of humor. Yeah, yeah, they could. They were able to flip so able to do it. For it. Okay, right, well, is this right. your favorite episode or your second favorite episode? Because we took the favorite episode. Well, yeah, like it's not my favorite because that last episode, of all course, right. was was, was the, the best. Was the juggernaut? All right, we all agree on that. So you get your second best episode. So which one did you pick, Jay? I picked the episode called "It's Number Six: Lift Us Where Suffering Cannot Reach." Mm-hmm. And there's a few reasons. There, oh, yeah. It, it, it just talked to me. I think it was very personal why why I thought this episode was great. I love that. I really like the doctor character. Yeah. I think he's really interesting. And finding out about his daughter and with the length that he went to preserve his daughter's life. I have a six year old daughter who is essentially oh, the same age as, as the character. Mm-hmm. And I totally identified with him doing anything that he oh, could to save his daughter's life. Like, I, I don't know. There was something about it that I found really compelling. That's mm-hmm. number one. That was, that was a big one. But this episode reminded me of the original series in a lot of ways. Uh, uh, several things happened. One, you know, Pike hooked up with a character, which I thought was cool, you know, because it was very Captain Kirky, you know, and it yeah. just brought, yeah. brought me back in a sense. Yeah. I thought they handled it really well. It wasn't like, you know, Kirk was, was he, would you consider him misogynistic in a way back in, you know? He was a player. He was a player, but it, it wasn't really denigrating women in any way, but it was still kind of like the man, you know what I mean? Yeah. I didn't feel that at all, which I thought was like it was like a modern version of, mm-hmm. of the original Star right, Trek. Okay. Um, they did something else in that particular episode that I thought was really ballsy. They they ended the episode with a really bad thing that happened. Yeah. And that is not Star Trek. Like Star Trek doesn't do that that often. Like this, that kid was actually a nice kid. He was really smart. We find out that his dad is just simply trying to save his life. You know, his dad doesn't want him trapped in this machine. You know, because he becomes like co-joined with essentially, I guess, an AI, right, to, to run mm-hmm. the planet and to maintain the planet. And I loved how Captain Pike at the end was like drinking in his room, like looking out the window, and he's like, this does not sit with me. You know, yeah, like, yeah. It, it landed super hard, and it made me appreciate his character so much more. Like, I always liked him and everything, but he, it added a really good sharp edge and dimension yeah. to his character. There's a kid out there that's suffering, and he's like, uh-uh. I'm not. I'm not okay not with okay that. Not okay with that. Yeah. But what are you going to do? But what are you going to do? And I like that they did that. They ended the episode with this kid being trapped in this horrible situation. It's a really disgusting mm-hmm. thing that they're doing. Now I get it. You also kind of get it because they don't know a better way. Yeah. They don't know what to do. Like they're they're trying to see every. You know, they have to sacrifice this kid to save the world. It's a legitimate scenario that they're in yeah. because the the founders set it up that way. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like. Um, like Logan's run in a sense. Like yeah, they're yeah. trapped in their own microcosm. Yeah. They don't know what to do. How do you get out of it? Well, you have to break the world to get out of it. It's a good it's a good plot device that gets used a lot, you know, where you're you're interacting with aliens and there's what's the line Dark between secret. 
respect for another culture versus respect for basic principles. That was explored all the time in the original Absolutely. series. You know? But they also, to me, it was also a dig on religion mm -hmm. because it had real religious connotation. Yeah. They didn't have to even, they didn't there. treat it like a religion. Yeah. It was a state. It was a state belief. Yes. You know what I mean? It wasn't really religious. Ideology. But it smacked like a religious ideology. And you also, you know, so you get a little bit like the Star Trek universe and Starfleet doesn't go for that bullshit. Yeah. And I just love that, you know, because it, it, it agrees with my worldview. So, yeah. And that we, we had this talk at, on one of these episodes, we, you know, we, we were at um, Dragon Con, the Star Trek thing. We were talking about the best captains, you know, uh, you know, Kirk versus Picard. And my position was Kirk was the best captain ever on Star Trek because he, you know, definitely prioritized what was morally correct over respect for another culture. Mm -hmm. And like, when, for example, you know, the planet where they're killing each other in simulated warfare, yeah, yeah, yeah. just step into the disintegration booths and yeah, fight yeah. Them. Nah. If you're going to fight a war, you're going to blow shit up. Otherwise, you forget how horrible war make is. Make it, you know, make yeah. it dirty and ugly. Yes. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't sanitize man mass slaughter. No, nope, we're not going to stand for that. It's not going to happen. And again, that's like the whole vibe of Starfleet is like, yes, we're a multicultural, multi species alliance where everyone has a voice and we have respect for other cultures and diversity, infinite diversity and infinite combinations. But there's a line, but you can't cross this line of basic ethics and yeah. of respect for like liberal democracy and all that stuff. But it's, and it's, Kirk walks that line, I think, fearlessly, yeah. like no other captain does. Anson Mount was kind of like dancing with that. Like really, he was more of the Hamlet, you know, in that he was sort of, tortured and brooding over uh you know respect for another so, yeah, culture, so but kirk, this is wrong. that's a cool thing to talk kirk about would have just said that nope yeah nope. You know? kirk, kirk wouldn't have stood for any of that yeah, right. well were they may and also while we're talking about kirk and picard yeah. real quick picard broke the prime directive yeah kirk didn't wait mm -hmm. kirk didn't didn't really break the prime directive not like really? picard did no i mean look sometimes i i think if i'm in circuses you know yeah it was I mean, already broken you know he was just <laughs> sort of, yeah, he's leaning into it a little yeah, bit yeah whatever um but you know, piece of the action. Piece of the action. Yeah. Yeah. It's all, it was already tainted it's from already that damn tainted. book that was left. But at you know, if you, you know, when you ask yourself, like you know, where does Anson Mount fit yeah. into the captains of all the captains? Yeah, he's a great addition because he he's got is the best different. hair. He does. He has fantastic hair. <laughs> Shatner had the turbo Shatner two thousand, whatever he had. So his hair is pretty damn good too. But I, I like Anson's Anson Mount's addition to the captains. Oh team. yeah, yes, totally. He's, he's fantastic. He's and he could cook. And there's something about him. I don't know what it is. It might be me projecting, but it does. It, he does seem to be in a little bit of a different generation than Kirk was. Yeah. That I don't know if that was deliberate, but it's there somehow. I'm feeling yeah. it. Like you know, mm -hmm. he is before Kirk. It's not the it's not the Starfleet of Kirk. It's the Starfleet of when he was when he yeah, was yeah. In, the, in his prime. Yeah. It was ten years that he has. I also like that he is talking about his death. Mm -hmm. he's not like it's not just squirreled away in the back of his head like he's saying yeah. i know i'm gonna die and i'm like yeah, it's bad and i'm dealing with it and people are telling him like maybe it isn't maybe that isn't your fate and maybe you can do this or you know good time to click over to the last episode yes. okay, right. so this was a brilliant episode right this is the the 10th episode the uh season the finale quality of mercy it's it's basically a, it's not a redo, but it's a reimagining of the Balance of Terror, the episode from the original series where the Enterprise encounters the Romulans for the first time yep. because they're attacking right. and discover that they basically look exactly like, like Vulcans. Vulcans. They are mm. offshoot of Vulcans, as I suspect. Mm. As <laughs> and I thought in the original series, I literally, as a kid, thought, "Why don't they?" Make them look different. Like maybe they ran out of makeup. Or I didn't understand why the two looked so alike. Because to me, they were they they should be completely right. different. Because other more campy shows do that all the time. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So and Jay, don't forget. Uh, uh, later on, when you see when you see uh, Romulans on a Klingon ship, it's because they had a problem with the bird of prey. Yeah. And, and so yeah. sometimes they do run out of shit. Yeah, yeah. They, but anyway. So the the plot device is great. You know, we already know they've already established the time crystals and that and that uh, Pike has looked into his future and realizes that horrible things are going to happen. And so he tries to save himself from that fate and in doing so ruins the future. And so now the Klingons, you know, have to send another have to send future Pike with a time crystal to our current Pike to say no, you can't do this and to convince him 
not to try to avoid his fate, which is a hard sell, mm. but they do it. And the, the result of that is to give him a glimpse of the future he will create if he tries to avoid his fate, basically by sending letters to the to the ensigns who the kids that were the cadets who would die, yeah. right? But it's not just a glimpse; he becomes. Oh, he lives through it. it, right? I mean, that's to me. Uh, I guess I had a, I had I forgot exactly how the time crystals work. I thought I thought that he had a glimpse of the future, and this was that, more. But he yeah, this it. is he yeah, this it. is more, and even and even uh, older uh, older ants, you know, older uh, Pike. Got, Star Trek Two Pike. <laughs> Right, yeah, right. He comes, but he comes back. He actually is time traveling. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so that, I just that, I didn't know the crystals can do that. Yeah, Whatever. I didn't either, Bob. That's I agree fine. With you. Okay, that that's okay. That's but I didn't know that's that. I didn't enough. know that. Still, still awesome. We again, we Pike evolved in this episode. Like he, you know, like the character is changing. Yes. And I think it's cool. Like they're not afraid to like show change in the but character. But how brilliant is that? So again, you, the you melding might, is, oh. you might dismiss this as fan service, but I would argue that the entire season, the entire series is, is fan service. Is. <laughs> they're just leaning into it. So I, I the, the, his, Pike goes to this future possibility that he's about to create. And he is and he's captain of, the, uh, he's captain of the Enterprise. When he, Burke was the captain of the and Enterprise. And he is presiding over a wedding. Mm -hmm. And I instantly, instantly knew what episode it was. Instantly mm -hmm. knew that this was the balance of terror, which also begins with Kirk mm -hmm. overseeing over the that. same, you know, right. the, the same, the same wedding. And all right, so I watched the whole episode. I then watched the Errand of Mercy, and then watched the episode again. Yeah, a Balance of Terror. The, the ba yeah, the, the balance, balance of Terror. I'm oh, sorry, the Balance of Terror, and then watched you know the the, the quality of Mercy, which is this you know this season's good movie. I wish I, I wish I and did that. It, it was it was I recommend it because uh -huh. the what they copied so much of the dialogue. I didn't I knew that yeah. there was a lot of similarities. I didn't realize how much. They mirrored the dialogue from the original right. series show, yeah. and but how they brilliantly kind of wove it down a different path. Yeah, like Spock is still Spock; he says the same things that Spock says, but now the context is slightly different. Mm -hmm. And I also like the fact that you know they changed how much we get to see what's happening on the Romulan ship. So yes, it's much more mysterious. Yes, we're not constantly bouncing back to the Romulan ship. We don't get to go there until really late in the game. Yeah, I thought they handled that just as a storytelling thing much better. And and then the the core of the brilliance, I think, of this episode is, of course, Captain Kirk makes Captain an appearance. Kirk. But you you know, so we see how Captain Kirk handled this encounter in the original series. And now we get to see what would happen when, you know, arguably an equally brilliant captain that is accomplished and knows what he's doing handles the same scenario, but just not with Kirk's swagger, whatever swagger, what, what, confidence, and you know, that intuition, brilliant, intuition. It was not it wasn't there. Yeah. Pike wants to, he's contemplative, he's thinking about yeah. it, you know, he wants to get engaged in a dialogue. He's more like Picard in, yeah. in this situation. But this was not a time that needed Picard. I, the phrase that always pops into my head is, he's not a wartime conciliary. You know, oh, like, nice. he, he's, just, he's not the right kind of captain to avoid a oh my war God. with the Romulans, whereas Kirk was the perfect captain yeah, yeah. to avoid that war. And of course, Kirk comes in, now he's like the captain of the Farragut in this reality, and he is his instincts are all correct. He, he's, he all yep. his instincts are correct, and without you know that magic combination of Kirk and Spock, you know stuff just doesn't go well for the Federation. And we real we we, we gain a deeper appreciation from this perspective of how important and how unique the Kirk Spock relationship yep. was, and how you know how strong a captain Kirk was, especially for these moments. You know, maybe he was a bit of an ass at times when when Pike would have been a better captain and a more touchy-feely captain, but when it comes to avoiding war with the Romulans, Kirk was it, man. Yeah. And as much as we're rooting for Pike and everything he says is perfectly reasonable and you want him to think he's right, he, Kirk's instincts were the ones to, to go with. Right, and we, right I like how it, it gives insight into how close Kirk was to creating a war. Yes. I mean, it was that, it was so close. I mean, that when that fleet showed up, like, holy crap, shit just got real, real fast. That didn't happen in the original <laughs> series. <laughs> you, gotta, you also have to nod your head to the idea of they did such a wonderful homage 
to totally. to the series that they're oh my god they're trying to capture some of the vitality from right yeah. like everybody knows why they did this why they made the pikes you know the, why they did exactly what they did with this season you know we know why yeah. it exists we know why they picked Anson Mount and everything is because we want we want kind of a retread in a sense of the original series without it being the original you know, series the original yeah. series and so, they did it they accomplished their goal one hundred percent the original series and Strange New Worlds did this for this episode and that's brilliant. And they did it without making it seem gratuitous. Yeah, or, right. Like, it, worked. It, it worked. It hundred percent worked. It, the writing was so good. And then again, seeing how they adapted the dialogue, like at the end. Yes. So you know when in the original series, Kirk and the Enterprise defeat the, the Romulan bird of prey, and they're completely defeated. Right. Their engines are gone. Their 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 weapons are are down. And Kirk's like, "We're ready to beam beam over you and your survivors before your ship blows up." It's not our way. And then he said, "Yeah, that's not our way. Just one more duty to perform." You know, in a different reality, you and I could have been friends. And we are of a kind. You Mark know, has Mark Leonard. It was Mark Leonard also who also played, yeah, also played Sarek. Yeah. In in you know the Strange New Worlds version in this episode, the exact same dialogue. It's the exact same line. Yeah. Just the context is a little different, yeah. yep. but it totally works. And it was brilliant. Uh, I loved it. I loved what it. a great episode. Yeah, I, very. It was. I, I gotta watch and it what again. a capper, watch it again. What a capper to. It went to the season. It was to come. Is that are we going to be on that level again? You know. Oh my god! I, well, they set the bar high with that episode, and they yeah. better they better uh, exceed it. I I, I trust right. that the, the the people responsible. I, I think series I think, can right. I think when they see the the response to that, to that episode, they're going to say, "All right, we sh- maybe we'll do another similar type of episode. You know, still keep up the the good quality, but I like this idea of of kind of fusing these together. I mean, we don't necessarily need to do this time is, travel. Yeah, it shouldn't be something. No, do the it's, same not that, it's not that, Bob. It's not that. Yeah. It's there's a quality level here, right? We're really talking about like how well was the the, the script constructed and the you thought. Know, and I want you know the, behind the scenes. Yeah, I, I know I know where you're going with that. It's it's the idea and everything, but behind the scenes, I wonder like were, were there different showrunners that were driving? Like who are the people that yeah. did this? Is it the same people? I got I got to do a little more research it up. to find out. Maybe there's a YouTube video on this. But this. You're, you're right. The important thing here is that. They knocked one way out of the park. Totally. And they know that they did, and, they, and they're thinking about it. They yeah. have to be. They have to yeah. be because it, there's, it, it was so good. It's a stark difference in the other episodes. It just, All the episodes right. were good. They're great. They're great, right. but, but this it, one was it. There's yeah. an elephant in the room. Yes. The book. Kirk. Oh. No. <laughs> what did you think of Kirk? Now, I think they, they screwed it up a little bit because we everybody knew that Kirk was going to show up in season two. And so the surprise season was two? yeah season two. The surprise was that he, was that he showed up in the finale, but they blew it. They tipped their hand when you, they showed it in the credits. Like really, yeah. um, but not not a huge deal. Not a huge deal. But it would have been a nicer surprise if they didn't telegraph it that much. But I thought he did. A, was it Wesley? I think he did a fantastic job. Um, yeah. It, the thing is, I, it took me a while to kind of settle into Shatner. my. It wasn't, it wasn't Shatner. It wasn't Shatner, and he wasn't doing an impression yes. of Shatner's Kirk. That's probably it was important. His interpretation of the Captain Kirk character. And it worked. He yes. he was he was a believable Kirk. He just wasn't shot. Yet. It's the only way to do it. Yeah, yes. you can't you can't oh have an God. actor come in and pretend to be another actor playing a character. No, no, yeah, that would have been yeah crazy. Yeah. The only way to do it is is with you know software at this point. If you want to yeah. you know mimic the right. voice and mimic the, the mannerisms and everything, at some point, yeah, they'll they'll make originals you know episodes again with those same exact vibe. Yeah, <laughs> right. but in order to have an actor come in and be like, okay, we need you to play Captain Kirk. Whoa. Everybody would be like that. That's a that's a huge ask to have yeah. the actor do because think about what shoes you're trying to fill. So the only way you could do it is make it your own. You got to make it your own. You Absolutely. have to, as a fan of Star Trek, you have to be okay with that. Yeah. Because we've seen other people play those same characters. Yeah. And not, yeah, he's not the second Kirk. He's like whatever the fourth. Kirk yeah. Or but out of all the other yeah. people that have played Kirk, this this one I appreciated. Yeah, I thought he did a great job. Yeah, you know, again, you just have I to. I want to see more. I want to see more of him. Yeah, yeah, it was a compelling. It was compelling, just in the, not in yeah. exactly the same way Shatner was. It was on the level of seeing Luke. You think so? Well, in a sense, in a sense, right? They they they're dipping into the holy well. Like this is yes. like the big. Goal. I agree. I, big. I agree. That was a big moment when he showed up. But I mean, you can't screw it up. You know, you have to be so careful uh, when you when you yeah, touch yeah. those the, that IP when you go into things yeah. that are so dearly loved. Yeah. 
But they already did that with Spock, like, who's a, you know, is all over this. I know. I, I, I don't disagree, and they did a great and job. They did a great and job. And this actor, Peck, is playing his version of Spock. Right. It's a, it's he's not it. Leonard Nimoy no, Spock. He's not. his version of Spock. And I like it. There's a, there's like a genuine... It. There's he's, a, he's great, except for those stupid sideburns. What's with his, mm. his squiggly sideburns? It's like, it's not, they're not straight. It, it, it's, or they, have, they don't have a curve. You know, there's a little, you know, a little curve, maybe, but his is like... Woo, doo, 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 doo. It's like, dude, cut it's that shit. Thing, Bob. Yes, but it's too, too creative. Well, Bob has a problem with the fashion in the future. <laughs> yeah, the hair and the just, sideburns. The hair is, you know, I just can't take my eyes off of it. Guys, watch this season. I, I, I've read a lot of people saying that they don't like it, and I and I they're wrong on many levels. I understand, and I think a lot of it comes from people who know the original series. Listen. Let this be its own thing. Let it be That's, exactly. Yeah, yeah. And listen, it's 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 to their own detriment. The thing is. Yes, obviously, there's, you, you can focus on what the season wasn't and on how it was different and how it wasn't as good in certain ways as the original series or whatever. Or you can enjoy the positive things about it for what it is. There is a lot to enjoy here, a lot. Yeah. Anson Mount does a great job of Pike. The writing is good. The, 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 it's one of the best bridge crews we've had since the original. Yes, series. You know, it really I, is. But right, I, I know who they. I, you know, I kind of know who they are. Remember in Discovery yes. after a season, like I don't even know half these people on the bridge. I know, I know their names. I know. I remember right. saying that. Right, but right, right. I agree. This is um, this is solid Star Trek. It's solid, it, especially when that's it, a, for the first season. That was great. It was great. I it exceeded think, my yes. expectation. When they come back with season two, you gotta hope that they learned some hard lessons. They mm. they they worked it in. They, they you know you gotta keep moving the ball forward. Absolutely. Yeah. If it's the same the same quality, the pretty much the same stuff as season one, I will be a, a little disappointed. I have something I'm hoping to point for out. them to really step it up even more. Now. I've asked myself many times the idea of like, why are certain shows, like when a brand new show comes out, they're breaking new ground and it's theirs. But Star Trek, like Next Generation had a problem and they had to kind of find their way. And it's like, it's a different thing because you're inside of a well-known universe mm -hmm. with beloved characters and everything. And you're trying to like recapture this lightning in a bottle, yeah. right? That's why I think that these shows that are inside of an existing universe where, where you have massive fandom and everything have a hard time because sure. they're trying to carve out their own little niche yeah. and make it work, right? This, in in that, keeping that in mind, this is a fantastic Star Trek show. Right. It really is a very, very good show that we have to just like, like tap the brakes a little bit and, and pause for a minute and realize they're doing it. They're actually doing something that, you know, a lot of other Star Trek shows didn't do what they're doing here. Especially Discovery. I mean, Discovery to me flew off the rails. This is this is is probably as good as Star Trek we're going to get for a long time. Mm -hmm. Probably. Yeah. Yeah. Have you been watching Lower Decks? I, I just can't get into it. Some good shit, man. I, it's I, I, good. We, it's we reviewed really good. it. It's problematic in some ways as well. Ah, it's 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 wonderful. If you guys enjoyed this episode, if you enjoy Star Wars and Star Trek. Then enjoy or science fiction, it's speculative fiction, 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 or even fiction. fantasy. Or how about this book? Or even if you enjoy reading great books. This book will be lot. What, what's the date? September, September 27th. September 27th. Our book is second book is. But you can pre-order it now. So if you enjoyed this show, guys, please go to alphaquadrant6.com. That's alphaquadrant the number six.com. Or if you really enjoy the show, you can join us on Patreon and become one of our patrons. That's patreon.com. Forward slash Alpha Quadrant and the number six, and we'll see you all next week. Bye.